Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go through the process of setting up a program on the Haas control. Uh, we're gonna go through the, the process of touching off a couple of tools as well as finding our XY work offset so that the program or the, the machine can run the program that we have exported from Mastercam. The first step is to, of course, load your program. And uh, I'm just gonna be doing this for pretend sake, but let's say that I have the program that I'm gonna run loaded. The first step is to establish our X, Y work offset or our work uh, G54 offsets. And that is the same as the origin that is in your program inside Mastercam. So on the Haas control, when we press this offset key, we go into our tool and our work offsets. Under our tool offsets, we have all of the different tool numbers that this machine's capable of recording offsets from. And right now, this is a 10 station carousel. So at the moment, we can only run 10 different tools. It also has a work page. If you page over to the work, that is where you'll record your X and your Y offsets. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna press offset, and then we're gonna cursor over to this work page. And you'll notice right now there are some values under the G54 G code X, Y, and Z axis. The G54 is our typical work offset that we program from Mastercam with. And typically in machine shops all across the, the world, the G54 is, is kind of like your default, uh, your default work offset. If you had two or three vices on this machine, you could set them up as G54, G55, G56, and so on. So the machines, the, the controls give you the option to have more than one offset. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna establish the center of the part or the, the top left corner of the part, wherever your origin is in your Mastercam program, we're gonna establish that location now that we're at the control on the CNC machine. And one of the things that we can do is use an edge finder. We can use a pointer tool if it's, if it's a particular part that doesn't need a very specific or precise location found, we can use a scribed mark in the center of our block and then we can just use a chamfer mill that has a sharp point to find that center. So we're, we're going to just use that method for now. We're going to close the door because with these Haas controls you have to have the door shut in order to rotate the spindle. We're going to press MDI that stands for manual data input and I'm going to press T4. After I press T4 down in the bottom the input line I can then press ATC forward or ATC reverse. And as you can see, it has changed tools. And I now have a pointer tool or a chamfer mill in the spindle. And I'm gonna use that to find our origin of our part. Now, uh, since this is just pretend, I'm going to make the origin of my part the top left hand corner of this part. So I'm going to use my hand jog button, I'm going to press hand jog, and then I'm going to use X, Y, and Z to jog that chamfer mill over to the top left hand corner. I'm going to press 10 thousandths increment, and I'm now going to jog this chamfer mill over to that top left hand corner. All right, and unfortunately, it's a little hard to see, but basically I'm just lining this up as precisely as I can for the moment. And you can open the door in this mode so that you can make sure that you're, you're getting this as close as possible. Once you start getting close, it's advisable to go down to a 1,000th increment. So we're gonna go down to the next smallest number and this will just allow us to get a little more precise with our location. Okay, that looks good there. Now, with this method, you have to understand that it's plus or minus five or 10 thousandths with accuracy. So this only works if you have a profile cut or something where you're machining you know, 360 degrees around the part and the outside edges really don't matter because you're going to flip it over and you're going to face off the excess. 
Uh, it also works well for engravings. Sometimes engravings don't need to be put onto a part with a high level of precision. So you can use this method to get the engraving pretty close to the center. Okay, so we've determined our location. We're now gonna press this offset button again because I switched over and I was, I was moving the tool around. We're gonna go to our work offset page and we're gonna cursor down to G54X axis. Now that we're at our X axis for our G54, we're gonna press part zero set and that is gonna update the X axis. I also wanna update my Y axis because we've determined both of those axes at the moment. So we're gonna press part zero set again, which is just below the F4 button. We've now locked in the location of where our part is in relation to the control. The only thing left is our Z axis. And in this situation, our Z axis is gonna start with zero. So we're gonna put a zero in and then we're gonna press F1 to erase whatever was in that value. All right, that's it. That's how you establish your X and your Y axis. Now the Z axis is at zero currently. However, if you choose to uh, take some material off the top surface of your part and you've faced at zero in Mastercam, that is the location where you'll put in your negative 10 thousandths or negative 15 thousandths to remove the material off the top surface of your part. At this point, we're now ready to start touching off the tools. The three components that are necessary for setting up a CNC program with the Haas mill are establishing your X and your Y, those are the first two, also known as your work offsets, and third are your Z axis offsets for all your tools. Now there may be 20 tools, but X, Y, and Z are the three main components that you must set up so that you can run your program. We're gonna close the door because we have to go to MDI and then ATC or press tool one, tool two, et cetera, so you can go in and set up each tool. Now I'm just gonna do one tool at the moment. I'm not gonna go through each tool. I've pulled up an eighth inch flat end mill and I'm gonna show you first the paper touch off method. So we're gonna use a piece of paper and we're gonna use hand jog, Z axis, and we're gonna bring that tool down and we're gonna bring it to the approximate center of the part. I wanna have a nice flat surface whenever I touch off. Okay, now what I just did there was I went down to my thousandth increment. So every click with the handle jog button is gonna move this end mill one thousandth of an inch. And I'll try to do this so you can see, but you can see I'm just bringing this tool down very slowly. I'm not grabbing on to this knob because it's not very controllable whenever you grab onto this knob, so I'm holding the, the hand jog wheel like so. And I'm sliding the paper back and forth till I feel resistance. Okay, now I'm starting to feel some resistance there and I'm gonna go 1,000th at a time. What I'm looking for is resistance, but I wanna be able to pull the paper out without ripping the paper. So there's a little bit of oil on there, but you can see I didn't rip the paper, but I felt resistance and that's what you're shooting for. If you can't get the right feel, you can always go down to one tenth, 0 0.0001 of a thousandth, and you can really dial it in that way. Once I've established that tool offset location, I'm gonna to go to my offset page, which is already pulled up, and I'm now gonna press tool offset measure, which is over on the other side of these F keys where part zero set was. It's over underneath the F1 key. Press tool offset measure, and that will load the new value under length geometry under the tool offset tool number one page. Now this says greater than setting 142, except yes or no. And this setting 142 is simply a safety measure so that if you have to make a big change, you're not accidentally making a mistake. And they just ask you, are you sure about this? And yes, we're gonna press Y for yes, we are okay with that. And once we do that, that number and that value is now loaded into that location. We then close the door so that we can make a tool change and we'll press next tool, which is right to the right of tool offset measure. When we do that, it moves over and switches to tool number two. And you can continue the process of setting up each individual tool using this exact method. Okay, and that is it. Now, once you've went through setting up each tool, the next part of the process is to go to the graphics mode 
All right, we got to hit memory first, then graphics. And you'll see over here, it gives us a, um, a screenshot of what our G code would look like. And at this point, we would press cycle start and we would allow our program to run so that we don't see any errors. And as long as this runs without having any errors, any red lights that come on, we can feel pretty confident that this program is going to run okay. It's not foolproof, but it gives us a little bit more confidence that we've done our setup process right. Now, I always recommend double and triple checking everything that you do whenever you're setting one of these up in your, in your uh, apprentice days. As you get more and more experienced, then a lot of times you can feel more confident the first time you do it. But uh, I highly suggest checking yourself two to three times, as well as a little trick that you can do is you can go into your offset page after you've done all your setup we can cursor over to the work page and we can put a positive value in our z-axis of one or two inches. So I'm gonna do one inch, hit enter, and that positive value of one inch is gonna allow the tools to all run one inch above our part. So we can actually do what I would call a dry run where it runs through the entire program one inch above where the material is so that we can make sure there's no big mistakes. Once we feel good about it and we're confident, then we can take that one inch out and then we can run the program for, for real. All right, I hope this helps. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.